Right, it's filler tomorrow, away, eh? But today, we're getting the last chance, probably, to hold that trophy <laughs> for a number of years. Let's hope it's just one year. One year, one year will do. You never know, you never know. You know, it's fun, funny. football's a funny old game. Careful. Yes, we could get relegated. That's not going to happen. I don't think we'll hold on to that, but still. This one, okay. <coughs> And here's Luke getting his picture taken with the trophy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, he's, he's an optimist. Okay, perfect. Okay, so one, three, that's John Cadiz there. Sorry? Get out of the way, you clown. Look at Fellini in the middle of the wig. That's magic. That one. Anyone else want to be yeah, in the shot? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Tommy's moving in. Yeah. Tommy's moving in. Yeah. 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 Y
you will have seen or hopefully you'll have noticed the bars at either end. It is a subsidised bar, it's which is always a good Penny thing. a pint, a penny uh, a pint. You'll also notice uh, that it isn't subsidised. We've got some free wine on the table. Oh, you two have already noticed the free wine. Yeah. That's okay. There is uh, free bottles of wine on the table, so enjoy. And let's get the Christmas off to a good start. Uh, as you can see, we've got some people already in the queue for the Premier League trophy. Pictures with that, with our very own Mr. Ash D. He's taking the pictures. Thanks, Ash. And we will get those to you over the course of the week or so uh, around Christmas. Get your video beyond. Camilla, um, Camilla Pocker Bowl. We also have on the tables, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and they'll be very good if you can keep an eye out for this, Margaret, on your table. Uh, all, all the stars are here. Slips of paper, because we do have a Q&A coming up with our legends after the food, okay? I've so uh, if you'd like yeah. to write down a question, uh, we are looking forward to welcoming three legends, ladies and gentlemen, and they are, of course, you've already seen the great man, we have Mr. Alex Stepney. We also have, coming up later on, and we're delighted to say that we'll be having two legends. Well, We have well. Dwight York <laughs> and Gary Pallister joining us. Dwight York? We will do as many and go through as many as we can later on. Quint of Fun ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you about the table. The raffle tickets are situated at each place. Right. If they're not turning up, Dominic, they are only ten pounds for the strip. What are you laughing at? You. <laughs> oh, right. The so, actually, the raffle tickets are free. free. Yeah. All right, so make sure you stay your what claim a on your raffle ticket now. And we have in the raffle, in the draw, we have a signed Sir Alex Ferguson book. We. Oh, you got We've got, you can have a bit of bingo atmosphere here. Joy, help me, please. Yeah. Hey. Thank goodness for that. House! And we have a signed, uh, we've got a couple of signed shirts there, Yeah, oh look, we're getting it. We're even getting the model here. We've got signed Man United shirts. Whee! And we also have a signed Manchester United football. Whee! Fine voice. And it wouldn't take long that wine to work. Uh, oh, we've got two signed Man Sir Alex Ferguson books. Two more. Oh, and, uh, and something that you lot won't be interested in. We've got alcohol and bottles of wine and all that. Whee! Whee! Oh, uh, champion, champion. So, uh, lots of good prizes. Uh, do keep your raffle ticket, keep it safe. We'll be doing that later on in the evening. Uh, we do believe as well uh, that we've got uh, some birthdays we can definitely mention in a short while. But, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Man United, uh, my name is Alan Keegan. You might not recognise me, but I'm the stadium announcer. The voice of all champions. Yes, we know who you are, for Christ's sake. <laughs> And uh, it's a real pleasure to be here this Fantastic evening. support and, uh, tonight. Absolutely delighted to be in your company. We're going to have a good afternoon, a bit of fun. Yeah. We're up for a laugh, aren't we? We are. Of course yeah. we are. Hopefully yeah. we'll fun. Anderson. A few Christmas stories. <laughs> <laughs> if we've got time, if we've got time, I'd like to share a couple of stories with you. If you oh, good. Fantastic. Share them with the rest of the room about supporting this great club. We've all got a story to tell, haven't we? Yeah. And then there's actually, just to get the ball rolling, uh, we've got a young man here tonight, I'm not quite sure where he's sat, but uh, I think his name is Rick Hull. He's not here. Here <laughs> you, Rick. There he is, that's Rick Hull, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Rick went with the lads, we've all been there. We can all sort of put ourselves in Rick's situation. Uh, he went to watch United in Amsterdam. Oh, right. okay. Spent all the money okay. travelling there and back Europa with all these lads. Yeah, and league, uh, did you go? Yeah. Back. You know what it's <laughs> like. I enjoyed it. It was a good day out. He fell asleep when he got there and missed the game. Uh, like, I've done that, but yeah, but you don't go for your own way. What's that all about, mate? So Rick's got the right to reply later. If you've got any brilliant stories about where's Chris? If only Chris was here. Very he quick one with you. Oh. Oh. Very big Chris is here for his European adventures. He left his daughter when she was two hours old to watch Man United. Uh, we'll be coming over to you later. Uh, Quick story. In Rome, Champions League final, Fred the Red was asked to do some activities at the fan zone. So we were inside the stadium and we're in the changing room and Fred the Red 
for a the lot because it got changed. It's, it's, it's name's not we Fred. We came out, there was a few of us, there was myself doing bits of fun on the, on the stage playing music. Fred the Red in his costume, or one of the United representatives, and we came out from inside the stadium on a buggy, like a little golf buggy job. Went about 100 metres round the stadium and did the little event on the stage. It could only happen to Fred the Red, because you know what it's like with all these passes and security. We came back on the buggy, at the entrance to get back in the stadium, and they said to Fred the Red, where's your ID? <laughs> I, I joke you not, so Fred Red goes, now as you know, we just normally talk, but in case you don't know, we don't talk, you shit, it's not normally, he goes, I'm Fred the Red, I'm Fred the Red. No ID, no access. So, I was all right, I got in, all right Fred, no problem. The United rep had to go back into the changing room, get his ID, come back out again, the security guard, the Italian guy, looks at the pass, and says, you look nothing like that. <laughs> You're still not coming in there in Italian accent. Unbelievable. So any stories you've got, share them with us. We might have time later, but I'll, if you've got one that you can tell me, let me know throughout the course of the meal. Uh, are you feeling a bit peckish? Yeah. Who's been shopping today? Great. Oh, no, you thought, all right, oh, yeah, we've got a couple. Oh. Fair enough, you're a good lad. So we're now here to enjoy it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Man United, it is the gold, it is the silver. It's a fantastic night. And we have got a quiz coming up later. Oh, crash oh. So what I want you to do for me is one little favour. I want you to have a look at the people you sat with. And just for a couple of seconds, I want you to shake hands and say who you are and introduce yourself. Just spend a minute doing that. We don't all know each other. My, my name's, my name's Dad. What's your name? Stuart. What's your name? Ben and Stuart. This is Benji. My name's Tell. This is Luke. Fantastic. And this is Tommy. Tom. Tommy, rock on, Tommy. Anyway, anyway, getting back to the Tom Cleverly. <laughs> so, so, oh, two girls here for me. I'm flipping out, man. I'm trying to make a point here, man. You'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, he thinks it's match day. So now, <laughs> oh. Do I need to keep still? No, just flipping. Is he saying a prayer? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, what I now need you to do is one more favour. Oh, I want you to make a very, very important decision for me. You can have a chat about this during the meal, but I want you to have a look at the people that you've just engaged with. And I want you to do me a favour. I want you to point a finger. I know it's rude to point, so young people, you mustn't do this outside of here tonight. I want you to point a finger at the person that you think on your table is the most intelligent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for this young lad, there's no pressure on you, mate. Uh, hey, mind you, he does look the most intelligent when I look at the rest of you. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the person that you've just pointed at... Is it, you point to yourself? The person you've just pointed at... It's you. That is your table captain. You're the, the captain, you're the captain. Oh, there you go. You. Captain Marvel. So, <laughs> ladies and captain gentlemen... Captain America. If you notice, perhaps you haven't, but later on, we have a quiz that's all to do with Manchester United. So you can use your table captain because you must use a keypad. Alright, we've got a keypad on every table. You will need to use it. Can we get it? Oh, it is sir. We found it. Table oh, sounds keypad. <laughs> yeah, Rick's down there, he's going to talk us through it. Andy's down there. Cheers, Andy. So that's what we're going to do later on. There you go. All right, but for Hello. the time being, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Paul, are we ready for dinner? Oh. Yes, we've had the white smoke, ladies and gentlemen. Paul, our manager tonight, has given us the thumbs up. It just leaves me to say, enjoy your Christmas dinner, Again. have a bit of fun, <laughs> and I'll be back in a short while with you. Oh, Thank no. you very much indeed. Too much. Right, Tommy's right. talking about flipping Tom Cleverly. Keep right. on him. Right. Right. Tom Cleverly. Yeah. Tom Cleverly. Tom Cleverly. So. Oh, 
So he's got a pitch on his phone, we're going to try and get another one 18 years later. <laughs> all right, so we'll do that later, Tom, when you come back in, all right, mate? So uh, give us a little while up for uh, Chelsea. And after three months at Stamford Bridge, he signed for Manchester United for a record fee of £55,000. Right. Yeah, his debut against Manchester City, he kept a clean sheet in a 1-0 victory. And by, the, by the end of the season, he won a league championship medal to cap what was a fantastic season. So Matt Busby describes signing him as the single most important factor behind our championship win of 1967. Ladies and gentlemen, a lovely, beautiful man, a legend of the game, he wore the shirt with pride, Mr. Alex Stepney. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, we move on to a gentleman who, as a compliment, was one half of the infamous Dolly and Daisy, <laughs> won three Premier League titles, three FA Cups and a League Cup. 
He signed for United for Middlesbrough for 2.3 million. What a bargain in 1989, which was a British defender record fee at the time. And listen to this, just missed only one league game, one league game between 1992 and 95. 437 appearances in total. A lovely guy, he's on MUTV as a pundit, he's working for the club on a regular basis. Please put your hands together for one of the greatest defenders ever to wear the red shirt, Mr. Gary Pallister. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move on, it's quite funny actually because on their two biogs, I've not got the, I've not got the age, but I have for this one. So moving on, young man played for Trinidad and Tobago, 72 caps, a legendary partnership with Andy Cole. Obviously, a pundit appearances on Sky TV and MUTV, and was on the pre-season tour of 2013. An incredible record of 64 goals in 188 appearances, three Premier League titles, one FA Cup and the Champions League with Man United. Please put your hands together for the man that is Dwight York. Pornography. <laughs> you took two for you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, three legends of the game. And of course, guys, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Obviously, we're here with passionate, dedicated Manchester United fans. Uh, gold, silver, the whole Monty. And uh, we've got a selection of questions for you guys, and uh, they've been presented by a number of people. But a generic one to start with, and perhaps we'll start down at the end with yourself, Al, and then ask Gary and Dwight to continue. But uh, Carol has sent us a question, and we thought we'd uh, offer this to all of you guys. Uh, what was the, the best game that you ever played in? What's the, the memories that come playing for Man United, and who was it against? Well, uh, excuse me, uh, I suppose really uh, you all think the uh, European Cup final of 68, but uh, I've got to say that playing for Manchester United was a great honour, and, and my very first game was against Man City. And, uh, <laughs> and, we won the title, uh, <laughs> and we won the title that year, so I'm going to say that's, that's Man City game. <laughs> Don't get any better than that, Al. Don't get any better than that. <laughs> Yes. Um, for me, it was uh, as, as a one-off. I think it was a 1990. Um, was it one? 1990 uh, 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 European. What was it again? Cup Winners' Cup. That was the one. <laughs> I think the name of this. She's changed so many times, hasn't it? Uh, but the Cup Winners' Cup against Barcelona. Um, that was uh, that was fantastic. The, the all in. Right the uh, right going into that game as as underdogs. Mark Hughes. Year back in Europe for English teams. Um, as I say, massive underdogs. It was. It was like a Manchester night, the night we played over there, and uh, to beat them um, two one, and and um, you know win that trophy was was unbelievable, and the, the party lasted for like, well, three days after that as well. So uh, very good memories from then. Brilliant, York. Hey! Um, for me, I think in Turin when we played Juventus and uh, pretty much. Yeah, that's a great game. I just think the, the, the same game. magnitude of the game, you know, being 2 0 down and having to come back from that, you know, the Italian teams are really difficult to, to get a result, but we showed a lot of character and it was a great game to play and obviously to score in the game and to contribute and to see Kino and everybody played in the way that we did um, was fantastic and obviously the rest is history when we go on to, to win the European Cup, which was great. It is, it was brilliant, fantastic memories. We've also got a, a question for all of you guys, we're trying to get as much as we can. Uh, Martin Swaite, oh, we've got your name right there, Martin. Just gives, gives a bit of a cheer, but nice to have you here, Martin. Thanks for this one. 
Um, guys, of all the players that you played with, we'll start with you, Yorkie, on this one. Of all the players that you played with, which one would you put in today's team? Who would you like to see playing for the current Man United team? All of them, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, for me, I, I, I think Paul scores. I think he's the one that yeah. stands out. And, uh, and I say that, um, I mean, I've been very fortunate. The, the team that I had in 99, we had a a star-studded team, really, and everyone, every individual was great in, in their position and, and exceptional players, but I just think that Scholes, the way how he played, they, you know, he, did, he wasn't have a lot of skills, and you know, he wasn't elegant going past people, but he could pick a pass and create spaces and to see the pass and play the correct way to pass at times, and not only that, he was a great trainer and a great guy, so I think for me, Paul Scholes is the one that stood out among everyone else. Wow, brilliant. How are you? Um, for me, it was Brian Robson. Robson, um, Robson! I think he was 32, 33, and many people maybe thought he was coming to the end of his career. Um, but he, he was fantastic for another three or four years. He was an unbelievable leader of the team. Uh, he made the game look so easy, had a tremendous drive and really dragged his teammates along with him in any, any kind of game he wanted to play, whether it was a, an FA Cup third round game against a, a non-league team or whether it be Arsenal, Liverpool, whoever, he had that same intent to win games. And as I say, he just dragged his teammates through with him as well. He was, he was unbelievable. Great answer. Cheers, Polly. Oh. Well, um, playing a team with three European footballs a year uh, was a bit difficult, really, but... <laughs> I mean, the only reason I wouldn't pick Dennis is because he used to get sent off on, in the first week in December. <laughs> so he could go back to Aberdeen for Hogmanay, but he had his suspension over the year. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby was a great uh, fabulous player. I mean, he used to score from 25 yards, unbelievable goals, but um, I would pick George Best. Whee! I think all of those the three of them probably scored around about the 30, 30 goals a season mark. I mean, but George used to uh, score his right foot, left foot, and head the ball in and uh, nutmeg people and still score goals. But um, now I go for George Best. Wow, three great answers. Yorkie, uh, we all know that you've uh, enjoyed a life of entertainment in one way or another. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're coming to it. Uh, just so I can put the blame on Rick Hull, who's asked for this one. Uh, all joking aside, uh, the fans adored you. They had a song about you. Do you actually know the song? No, I don't. <laughs> I've heard it, but uh, up to this day, I still don't know the song. Are we allowed with the children in the room? No, I don't think, no. I don't think. <laughs> It's not allowed with the kids being around. I haven't heard it. Any chance, mate? <laughs> oh, it's not heard it. I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I really don't. <laughs> you are the king of pornography. John Vickery. Uh, M.U.S.C. <laughs> Thank you. There we are. The choir of Manchester United. <laughs> Polly, we've got one for you, mate. Um, it's not so much singing, but uh, Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Peter Schmeichel. It actually says here from Greg, what's Schmeichel's bite as bad as his bark? Um, no, I mean, he, he was fine off the pitch. He, he was one of them characters that did change as, as soon as he crossed the white line. Um, a bit like Mark Hughes. Sparky was exactly the same. Um, very quiet, my man had kind of off the pitch. But uh, once he was on it, he turned into a Tasmanian devil. Um, and, and Peter was a bit like that. I mean, you, you've seen countless times me and Brucey having stand up Barney's going on the pitch, but you know, 99% of the time, we'd go in the dressing room and we'd just laugh about it. Um, but that was him. I mean, he, you know, he, obviously Bruce used to whine a little bit, he used to call him the German, which uh, <laughs> used, to, uh, it's used to pee him off a little bit, to be quite honest with you. Um, Is that on the pitch? But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, for, for you know, for I think for five or six years, he was the best goalkeeper in the world for me, and um, you know he was. I think that's 
on great players. I think that's a great trait to have the way, you know what I mean, he's passionate about the game and it, and it, and it spills over on the pitch sometimes how desperately he wants to win. Brilliant. Cheers, Pally. Um, Al, as we move on and we look at the sort of characters in the, in the sort of teams that you all played for, tell us about a few in your team because I've, I've heard lots of great stories with you in the past, so share one or two of us. Well, I suppose really um, I was unlucky when I came. I had seven years uh, as a roommate with Pat Crerand. Oh my God. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, Pat always used to say to me, uh, he said, Matt, always said to him, uh, if he got sent off, he, uh, he had to make sure that whoever he's, you know, he tackled or fouled against, um, he had to come off with him. And, uh, oh my God. We were playing at Blackpool, uh, we, we were playing at Blackpool at, uh, back in what, about 67, 68 I think it was, and um, uh, a guy called Craven who played for, for Blackpool at the time, uh, Paddy just sort of went over the top and of course he got his marching orders. And where we came out of Blackpool was behind the goal and I was in that goal right, by, right beside the tunnel and because Paddy just punched him again and because he retaliated <laughs> he got sent off as well uh. but it's the fastest I've ever seen Paddy Crow run he ran to the tunnel and stood there and said come on come on and when he got to the tunnel he didn't want to come off uh, young Joe Craven but uh, you could hear the screams going up the tunnel as he was beating the bloody life out of him but, <laughs> But of course, the other fellow was uh, little Nobby Starbs. I mean, Nobby was uh, a character. He was such a lovely man, you know, going to say about players are great off the pitch. He was fabulous, Nobby. He was a lovely man. But once he went over that white line, he changed. He absolutely changed. And he would kick anybody. <laughs> and he would actually he'd kick you as well, you know, if you made a mistake and shout you. But they were the kind of guys we played with. But you had to have people like that in your team. You know, that was why, you, you, you know, you won, you won things. Brilliant. Polly, um, we've got a question here for Brian and John. Um, it's basically on the lines of, uh, and obviously you mentioned Brucey before, but it says here, um, including England as well, who was the best centre half that you played with? And uh, it's asked to mention a little bit about Rotterdam, which you've done, but basically, who was the best centre half that you ever played with? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, Brucey, Brucey was fantastic, but uh, you know, I played in an era where. You know, Tony Adams um, played so many times for England. Uh, he was a great, a great leader for Arsenal as well. Um, you know, maybe he had a drink problem or two, but um, <laughs> we'll put that against him. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, I think I would. You know, Des Walker was also terrific. I don't think he was maybe as good on the ball, maybe as as Tony or, or maybe a few centre around at that time. But um, all in all, I would I would I would give that accolade to Tony Adams. Interesting, Sorry. <laughs> interesting one. Yorkie, uh, Anthony Hilton um, has asked us to ask you to elaborate a little bit on your sort of relationship with Andy Cole, both on and off the pitch, you know, because you had this telepathy that we're all aware of. What was it like for you, coming from Villa and forming that relationship? Well, I, I think um, when I first come to the club, there was a lot of rumours about Coley leaving the, the football club um, and Coley sort of took time out and really showed me the areas where to live in um, and certainly the places to go and shop and all that kind of stuff and where not to go to sell food and stuff like that. <laughs> he was telling me all of the... And Moss Side and those places. What's wrong with Moss Side? So Yorkie, where did he tell you to shop? <laughs> <laughs> we did lots of shopping. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, again, despite all the, the speculation about Cody leaving the football club, he did take time out to show me all these various things, and and of course he invited me to his home as well for dinner and all that with his family. So which I thought was very good of him uh, under the circumstances that the fact that he was going to um, leave the football club. Then when I first started out, I played with um, Teddy the first game, then with Ollie the second game, then Ryan Giggs a couple of games, and uh, never had the opportunity to play with Coley. And we never trained, we always trained opposite against each other in training, so I never really had that understanding. I know Coley in the past before because I've been out with him a couple of times. And after that, it was just one game that we played and we sort of clicked from there, but we become friends despite the speculation that he was going to be leaving the club. 
and all the things that he had done for me when I joined the club, I just thought, you know, this is great. Um, and obviously the rest is pretty much history. When we had that opportunity to play, we played and performed well together. Um, we never trained as a pairing in, in training, and I think that's the weird thing. But it got real bizarre towards the end because me and Coley was driving the same car, the same color car. And then we would turn up, and I know this might sound a little bit peculiar to everybody, but we got on the same color boxer shorts and all the sorts. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm being that serious. We didn't plan this, but it got to that stage at some stage, and it's like... What's the those shopping trips? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was really bizarre. But um, yeah, and I said the, the understanding that me and Coley had, obviously, it was uh, tremendous, but... You know, we both of us take a lot of applaud for, for the goals that we scored, but I gotta thank the teammates. We had a fantastic bunch of guys in every position that create the game, made the game very easy for us to play. And me fitting into the to the system was very easy because of the, the quality that we did get, have at the, the, the football club. So yeah, well, you know, what happened between me and Coley it was just a one-off and uh, I don't think we could have predicted that, but it did work and I'm sure that everybody here can vouch for that and we had a fantastic time and even in three years we become closer now even now um, you know Coley and I still live in very much a, a stone throw away from each other and see each other all the time we go to the gym all the time we do all sorts still so it's just a tremendous and I, I've been fortunate to have a good friend like in Coley as well brilliant thank you that's great to hear that well, thank you. Alex, uh, we've we, we talked from the defender's point of view and the attacker's point of view. From, from a goalkeeper's point of view, who are the players that, sort of, not so much that you feared, but who are the players that you respected in your day? So sort of, when you think about who you're playing the next day in a match, who are those that came to mind or come to mind nowadays? One who frightened me very much, and there was a guy called Andy Lockhead who used to play for Burnley. And we knew he was a hard man, and he actually went to Aston Villa, I think. Uh, but there, there was some. I mean, the game's changed so much today. I mean, goalkeepers don't get nutted and charged and knocked over and kicked. And, you know, it's one of those things you had to defend yourself, you know, that was a look after yourself. That's why I never wore gloves, because you couldn't hurt anybody with gloves on. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, there's always a, a certain player that, uh, that gets on your nerves and always seems to score past you. And that was, I mean, Alan Ball, he always used to score past me. I mean, the, you know, he never scored great goals. I mean, I tipped the ball, uh, touched it onto the post, and it went straight back to Alan Ball, who just laughed at me and just put it in, in uh, not to the line. But Alan Ball was probably uh, the guy that scored to, uh, quite well, a lot of goals against me because, uh, you know, he was a great player, but he just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, great player, like you say. Thanks. <laughs> Polly, um, Alan has asked us to ask you this question regarding. Um, set of halves and defenders and pairing of defenders. Um, who do you think is the best pairing for United at the moment? Who do you like to see sort of guarding the defence from the current squad? Um, right now I'd say they're the, the two probably most informed probably Vidic and, and, and Johnny Evans I would say. Rio's, Rio's had a bit of a difficult start of the season. Um, Phil Jones hasn't played there an awful lot, same with, with Chris Smalling as well. Um, so I would say presently, um, probably them two. It's, I mean, it, it is a squad game now, that's the, that's the thing about, uh, you know, back in my day with when myself and Steve played, never got rested or anything like that, played every game under the sun. Um, we only had a squad of maybe 20, 20 players, now you're looking at squads of 30 and what have you. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Johnny Evans is. is Showing great resolve after you know that problems he had maybe two or three years ago when I think he got dragged off against West Ham and everybody thought his career might be over at Old Trafford, but he, he showed great resolve, uh, great determination to come back, and I think his form has been exceptional. And just adding on to this, um, do you see uh, Jonah? Do you see Jonah fitting into there because he's not really been played there, has he? Right back. No, he's played right back, centre midfield. Um, you know, we've seen other players go down that route. John O'Shea was a was a was a centre half started in the first team as a centre half, then got straight to, to right back and, and then midfield. Wes the same as well, and I think it's very difficult. Um, but I, I do see that as his his natural position. Um, I think he's still got a lot to learn about that centre midfield role. Um, certainly doesn't look that comfortable at right back. I think centre half. I think if he was to play there week in week out, we'd see a, a fantastic a fantastic player there. 
Yoki, um, you've already sort of reflected a little bit on the, the 99 team, but just for us as fans and Man United going along that roller coaster as, as a fan, wondering if we could do the treble, just take us along that little bit of the journey when you started to believe, yes, this can actually happen, you know, we can do the league, we can do the cup, we can win the Champions League. But how did it all come together and what was it like to be part of that history? Well, the thing is, I mean, I came here to, to win things and uh, I never thought that we were going to win the trouble in the first year. Um, the Premier League was always bread and butter, as we say, and uh, when I got here, that was the first thing on my agenda to make sure that we win the Premier League again. Um, but, you know, as I said, when you look around and the quality that we have in that dressing room at that particular time, it was just such an easy way to play football. You know, coming from Villa, I had to go back and get the ball and dribble to two or three people before I could even get a shot. And then my first time of playing here, that when I get the ball out to, to Bex, he would whip it in, I wouldn't get, get on, the cross, on the end of crosses. So I thought, blimey, I can't dribble too many people here because I just won't get in the box the time because the players are so exceptional. Anyway, so as the, the season progressed, um, we got better. We got a, a, a sort of standard team that the manager can always rely on and go in there and get the result when we need it, even though we had people like Teddy and Ollie, you know, the competition for places was so difficult. Um, but then as the, the season progressed, and there, there was a certain belief that the kind of things that I've never experienced coming to this football club looked like we're gonna lose with two minutes to go, and then suddenly we're turning things around, and. There's a certain element of belief in that dressing room, and it certainly comes from, from Sir Alex, we know that. And um, there's just strong belief there that we're going to win the league. Um, the FA Cup was always a, a target as well. And uh, the closer we get to the, the semi-finals and the, the quarter-final of this world, we felt that, that, um, that we could go on and win the treble. Um, we knew it was going to be totally difficult. We needed a bit of luck, which we did get. Um, but the, the lads were determined and certainly, well, as, I, as I said, it, probably around April, middle of April, we start believing that the fact that we can do this. And um, so we put up a little chart, I think we did in the dressing room and start, you know, ticking the game off one by one and, you know, sort of counting down the games and think that we can do that. But it was a great belief within that squad um, and everyone, you know, doesn't matter who come in, equally as good as well, impressive to score goals and play well. And we managed to do that on a consistent basis, but it was unbelievable experience, something that I will certainly um, remember for the rest of my life. And to be part of that treble winning team, it was a, a great experience and something that I will be very, very grateful for this football club. And I'm sure the fans who's been there and witnessed it was nail biting at times, but quite exciting at the same time. And I'm sure that everyone enjoyed it. And uh, I certainly enjoyed playing in, in those games and being part of such a, a fantastic squad. And what was that? What were the celebrations like with the boys afterwards? Well, that's when it got a little messy, I think. <laughs> no, it was just great. As I said, you know, when we when we win the the, the, the league, um, the Premier League, and with the, with Coley coming off and scoring that winning goal, it was nail biting again because against um, Arsenal they were winning and we needed to win the last game. I think that was quite exciting. Everyone was celebrating that, and of course we already qualified for the FA Cup, which was a week later. Um, and the dressing room was just pure buzz. The fact that we was in three final, we won the, the, the we, we secured the Premier League. Now we got the FA Cup and the Champions League to come. I think everyone was just on such a high that um, we were going to try and create history here. Um, not too many people has been able to do that. And um, the manager said to us at the time, you know, let's do something special. Let's get this club to where it belongs. Let's get go and win that European Cup. We fancy our chances again, Newcastle again, and that's no disrespect to Newcastle because we were playing particularly well at that time and everyone was high and confident. So going into the Newcastle game, we were pretty confident that we were going to win that. And of course, the big one in, in, uh, in Barcelona against Bayern, I think that was the one because we did lose two of our key players in Scorsi and, and, and Kino, our captain, obviously. So that was a big blow for us. But again, the belief within that squad and the players that we had to come in to compensate for these players. Um, we know we didn't play particularly great and this is where you need a little bit of luck, but we had a, a great belief and of course the, the managers make those two 
magical substitution uh, towards the end that really turned the game on the head for us. And as I said, it, the celebration just goes on. I celebrate for uh, pretty much <laughs> so this year, the rest of his over life. Six weeks, I came, <laughs> six weeks. I came back in the preseason. <laughs> That was a short celebration for you, you know what I mean? It was, and, and of course when we come back to the fans and everybody in Manchester City, I think it was a million people just breaking all in the street, uh, that, that, was just, that just tells it all then. So, as I said, to, to be part of that and to see the, the joy and satisfaction from everybody, people who probably didn't like Man United came out on the street that day and it was exceptional. Wow. Alex, um, you mentioned before about uh, three European footballers of the year. Um, just give us an overview because these two guys played with legends, with players that are our favourites, but you played with proper legends and you mentioned three European Cup players of the year, so European players of the year. Just give us a little bit of a bio on what each of them was like. I mean, start with Bestie. Well, George was um, unbelievable in respect that he, he was very clever uh, in, in a way that he knew if he could do something different on the pitch and win the game. And don't forget, in those days, every game was at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. He would get all the plaudits on the back pages of every Sunday newspaper. So he was very really clever. But once, this is a true story. I mean, what, uh, he used to do so many different things in training, uh, which was unexpected. And we were playing Liverpool at Anfield on the Saturday, and we finished training at the Cliff on on the Friday, which was only we only sort of done sort of five or five little games before on a Friday. He came to Pat Crow and I and he said, I want to try this out. He said, because he said, uh, Liverpool have got a full plan at Anfield. Liverpool have got a fantastic goals against record at Anfield. Not many teams scored at Anfield because Bill Shankly had this back four of what? Emin Hughes, Ron Yates, Tommy Smith, Chris Lawler. Tommy Lawrence was a goalkeeper. But that back four played high up the pitch when they played the game. So when any team tried to go over the halfway line, they were on top of them, they would win the ball, foul you. It doesn't make no difference. And that's how they played. But George had pace, and he basically said to Paddy, he said, Paddy, I want you to go on the old right half position on the, on the training pitch. He said, and face that goal down there. He said, I, I want you to go in goal against me down there, and do what you would do in a game. And he said to Paddy, right, turn, his second touch, knock a diagonal ball that's going to go about 20 yards in the left wing position. And he stood on a halfway line, and he, Paddy was a great passer of the ball and he hit the ball and he went, got to the ball, uh, George, and he came with me at the angle and said, goalkeeper, you try and push him away. I couldn't because he kept coming straight at me, straight at me. The ball was never more than six inches from his toe. He kept coming straight at me, straight. And then you get to that situation, you've got to dive at his feet. And as I went to dive at his feet, he toe poked the bloody ball, he hit me on the shin, <laughs> bounced off his shin and he put the ball in the empty net. <laughs> he said, you didn't expect that, how did you? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Anfield the next day and uh, actually we were kicking towards the cop end and I forgot all about it and I, I took a cross and whenever I got the ball, Paddy always wanted the ball off me and I threw the ball to Paddy and I realised what he did, he turned and I realised it was on because he hit this diagonal ball which went between uh, Ron Yates and Tommy Smith, Bestie was on his bike, got, got between Smith and Lawler, got to the ball. Emin Hughes tried to come across to cut him out but he didn't even know the pace and because Tommy Lawrence did exactly what I did. And he kept going straight at him, straight at him, straight at him. Because when he went to dive at his feet, he toe poked the ball, the ball hit his shin, and he put the ball in the empty net. <laughs> and he, he stood there, George, and he, he laughed. He laughed at the cop. He laughed at the <laughs> because, because after the game, I just said, you know, and he ran all the way back to the halfway line, and, I, and I, after the game, I said, Put your George, I, you must have enjoyed that, mate. He said, I did how he said, but uh, I tell you what I enjoyed better. I said, what was that? He said, as I was running back to the halfway line, Ron Yates and Tommy Smith were shouting at me, sorry there was no young kids in, you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Al. Just, just give us an overview on the wall, man. Well, Dennis, Dennis was a character, as you know, um, great goal scorer. He was, he was, you see, the three of them were all different, you know, I mean, Dennis was at the six yard box, penalty spot area, that's, when anything went in there, if a goalkeeper dropped it or just touched it, he would be, you know, if it come off a defender, Dennis was there. And he was a fantastic header of the ball. And I think that was Dennis Forte. I mean, 
he was unbelievable as a goal scorer and a character and he was a great captain for the club. Unfortunately, uh, he missed out on the European Cup final in 68 because of his car list, but he did play against uh, uh, Real Madrid here when we won in the first leg in the semi-final. And of course, Bobby, well, what can you say about Sir Bobby Charlton? I mean, uh, an ambassador to the game, I mean, the director here, but uh, all his life, played for one club and uh, that was the main thing. And uh, it was adored because, I mean, not only that, he survived Munich. And mm. I've got to say, I know uh, it's sad that Bill Fultz uh, passed away a few weeks ago when his funeral was this week. But he was a great lad and, and to play with two survivors uh, from, from Munich and win the European Cup is something. Yogi, when you look at the sort of players that you played with and, and, and sort of the opposition, who, who are the players that you admired outside of Manchester United in your career? There's a few actually. I've been very fortunate. I think Zidane come to mind. I think he was an exceptional player. Every time you see him, he's just very elegant, made the game look extremely um, easy. I think the original Ronaldo as well from a striker's point of view. He was not an exceptional footballer. He can do. He can go both left or right. And he could score all type of goal. I just think those guys were exceptional. Luis Figo and the list go on. You know Roberto Carlos. You know, you remember him as well. It's just so many great players. Um, and I think that's the, the good thing about the sport. You always admire other players, and you know you admire what they do. And uh, those names that I've mentioned are, are, are just a few of the exceptional. Um, Lots of great players, but these guys are world-class players, and um, I've always admired those guys from from uh, playing for United and I had the opportunity to play against these guys, and I've been fortunate to know a few of them off the pitch as well, so which is great. And um, no, uh, they're, they're they're really great players. Now, Pally, we're, we're talking with a forward here who's given many people in this room lots of memories, but I think if uh, most of us reflect on your one outstanding goal, Polly. I was two at Anfield, what are you talking about? Uh, so, uh, Talk us through it, please, Polly. Well, the amount of stick I was getting that night before the game, as you can imagine, I think even Peter Schmeichel had scored that year uh, in a European tie. And Paul Parker had even scored that year as well. So there was me left in the dressing room when somebody, um, I think it was Brian Kidd, sort of reminded everybody that I was the only one who hadn't scored that season. So uh, I, was, I, was, I was the brunt of the stick that was, you know, in the dressing room, the pattern was flying and I was getting absolutely cane. So it got to half time, um, I think we, we managed to get back to one all. We were still drunk from the nights before, we'd been celebrating at Brucey's house till, till four o'clock in the morning. So we weren't, in, I think we sobered up by the start of the second. Um, <laughs> So and it's actually on the MUTV documentary, I'm in the dressing room saying if we get a free kick, he said, I'm, I'm on it, I'm taking it, if we get Cantona, Giggs, Dennis, Irwin, <laughs> get out of the way, it's mine. So sure enough, as, as, as fates would have it, we get, we get the free kick and I think it was about the second minute of injury time or something like that. I run straight yeah, over and the boys are laughing to know what I'm going to do. Uh, and, um, it's funny, isn't it? You know, they let me, they let me take it, but obviously not expect me to smack it in the bottom corner. I managed to do that with the aid of a slight deflection, which yeah. led to Dennis Irwin crying home goal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was, yeah. Uh, but no, that was. I, I also got told off me uh, off me nana back home when I because I actually swore in the celebrations. Uh, um, so I got a battery when I got back home for that as well. But yeah, I mean that was just a perfect ending to a to a perfect night. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned that. Uh, I know when we've spoken before. You mentioned uh, about uh, the celebration at Bruce's. Cause did, did he ask the gaffer could a few of the boys call, call around for a drink? <laughs> yeah, well, that was a weird one because we the gaffer had told us not to watch the game. I think it was all the Muslim were playing um, Villa. And um, yeah, the night before, and the gaffer said, Look, I don't want you to expend any nervous energy watching the game, and you know, what I mean, I want you to be fully focused on what's happening tomorrow. Villa are going to win, we're going to need the three points against Blackburn, so don't watch the game. Yeah, right, okay. So, <laughs> no, we, we sat there, I was walking up the stairs, down the stairs, out in the back garden, out the front street, because I was so nervous about how I wanted all to win and get it all done and dusted, because we'd obviously lost it the year before to Leeds. Um, so we just wanted it to, you know, to be done and, and, and finished, and we uh, have the championship. So eventually we, we get the results, and uh, I'm then sat, sat there. I think my parents were around my house, and I'm just thinking, well, this is a bit of an Andy Clowns. I just won the, the Premier League, there, and I'm just sat here, like, you know what I mean, just staring at, you know, 
whatever on the, on the TV saying we were champions. I'm thinking, God, this is crap. Um, <laughs> anyway, the phone goes, and it's Brucey, Pally, I've had a word with the gaffer. He said, it's all right to come round and have a couple of beers, but don't go daft. <laughs> this is six o'clock at night, right? We rocked out with Brucey's out at half, house at half one in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely blitzed. We set out things to get crates of champagne, crates of beer. Um, and you can imagine the party was just, it was just fantastic. Friends, family, players, everybody just congregated on, on Brucey's house and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, when we got to Old Trafford on the night for the game against Blackburn, the gaffer was meeting us, we were sitting in the, the grill room here, and he was there at the door to greet everybody as we walked in, and he was sort of like, well done, Pally, come. Oh, dear God, another one. Everybody was coming in with sore heads, and I, you know what I mean? It was, it was hilarious. And as I say, it took us 45 minutes to, to come round, I think. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Pally. Um, we're nearly there, but I'll, I'll, I think it wouldn't be right and fitting if we didn't have a chat about the great man that was your manager, Matt Busby, just give us a little bit of a reflection on his style and man management. I know you've got some great stories about the character that he was. Yeah, I mean, obviously, being at the club for what, 25, 26 years, um, he, he formed a dynasty, a family, and that was what it was all about. You know, when you come to a club, uh, and especially when you've got your manager as is, 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 is Matt Busby or Matt Busby it was when I, when I joined uh, and you're around this place and what had happened you know a few years earlier in Munich uh, it wasn't easy to really talk about things you know in the dressing room and no one ever did actually but he was this is the kind of man he was and, and this is Something happened to me when when I uh, when he came down to London to sign me. He came down with Jimmy Murphy, and uh, on the Monday, and uh, I agreed to sign for the club, obviously. And uh, he just said to me, "Right, well, we get the ten o'clock train from Euston uh, tomorrow morning. Meet you on the station at, at nine thirty. So I'm travelling uh, on the tube from Morton in, in, in South London <coughs> in, in the rush hour. <coughs> Excuse me, in the rush hour, and." Um, I'm on the back page of everybody newspaper, and uh, I get to the station. I'm thinking, well, <clears throat> I'm, going be, I'm going to be in a first-class carriage with Matt Busby and Jimmy Murphy. What am I going to talk about for bloody three hours? And because when I met them, he just said to Jimmy Murphy, "Jimmy, go and get some newspapers." I thought that'll do. I can waste a bit of time reading some newspapers. Got in the carriage, train took off. I'm reading the paper, and then all of a sudden, he just slipped the Daily Express across the table. What's all that, son? I couldn't believe it. On the front page of the Daily Express was a picture, head and shoulders of my wife. And the headline was, I'm not moving to Manchester. <laughs> I'm not living in Coronation Street. <laughs> and I said, oh, I, I don't think about it, boss. I said, the press might have got to it last night, but I don't know what it's all about. But anyway, Six weeks later, whatever it was, and uh, I'm in digs around the corner here in Railway Road, and uh, I used to go home back to London on the Saturday after the game if we didn't have a midweek game. And he, he actually said to me, but we didn't have a midweek game, he said, uh, right, Monday's off. He said, but I'd like you to bring your wife up on Monday, and I'll get an estate agent to show you around some houses, because it's about time he bought a house up here. So I thought, right, so I went home and said, oh, you're coming to Manchester. I mean, that went down well anyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> So we got the, got the 10 o'clock train, arrived at, uh, at Piccadilly, and I'm looking for someone who's going to meet me and uh, take me around the stage and take me around the, and show me some houses. And uh, who's on the platform is Matt Busby. And he come up and he just said, uh, uh, welcome to Manchester to invite He avoided me, he just give her a kiss on the cheek. And I said, uh, well, where's your stay agent, boss? He said, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> and that's a class act. Uh, because he took us all around the houses. So we could buy a house in, in Manchester. And from that day on, my wife never went back to London. Oh. Brilliant, brilliant, Alex. Polly, you all a story from each of you about the great man, Fergie. Give us a story, Polly. Your dealings with him. Yeah. Give me a story, dear God. Uh... But it's man management. No, it's man management. It, it, it's second to none, I think, you know, Everybody who's played for him will tell you exactly the same. That's his great strength. Um, he's dealing with the different kind of egos, um, the characters that are in that dressing room, all sorts of characters. 
Um, you know, he just he just pushes the right buttons. Um, he can be he can be nasty at times. He could be like a loving father at times. Um, but he was you know he was he was always a, a tough taskmaster. Um, but you, you you knew where you stood with him all the time, and um, you knew that you were all pulling in the same direction to try and win things for Manchester United. So. Um, um, millions of stories to, to tell, I mean... We only want was, one. I, I, mean, I can't think of it, you know what I mean? I, I can't, I can't, most of me can't even tell you, really, <laughs> quite honestly. We, we won't tell anybody outside of this room, you're all right, pal. One of the funniest things I ever saw was, 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 um, was Paul Itz. Um, I think we, he, he gave the NC a rollicking after one game and... and um, I think he's, 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 he said, oh, you know, you're not playing the next game or something like that, you know what I mean? You were crap tonight. One of the hair dryer treatments that Incy got. And um, so the next morning, Incy's brought an air rifle in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably frowned upon now. But he used to, in, 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 the, in the cliff, he used to have his, uh, his office and then a, a little go through the room and there was a little shower area and all that, you know what I mean? So Incy had crept in there before, before the gaffer had come back from training. And uh, he was in the he was in the shower room. So the gaffer's come into his office, and he sat down, and all Incy did was poke the butt of the, the, the barrel with the gold tooth. Looking absolutely uh, as you can imagine. Uh, yeah, that was one of the standout moments. I think. Yeah. We don't want that on Twitter tonight, please. <laughs> Wow, well, oh, well. Yorkie, it's a hard one to follow. The air shot, but... <laughs> That's a difficult one to yeah. follow, to be fair. Your, your dealings with the gaffer, or more to the point, the gaffer's dealings with yeah. you. <laughs> That's about right. Um, my, my funniest moment is when I joined the club, and normally when you come up, they put you up in a hotel and stuff. And I wanted to stay in the city centre, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Why was that, Dwight? <laughs> it's closer to the training ground, closer to the train. <laughs> shopping. Shopping. <laughs> in <Cola>. Absolutely. <laughs> but they, they, so I thought, right, I'm going to be staying in one of the fancy hotels um, in the city. So I got my, my agent at the time to organize it, and uh, no problem. First day there for a couple of days, everything went well. Enjoying being at Manchester, enjoying all the, the surroundings in Manchester, so to speak. Um, and then... The scenery. <laughs> the scenery, yeah. So, and then, so clearly the, the managers got wind of it that I've been around Manchester a couple of times. <laughs> I, you don't Manchester. <laughs> but then, then uh, I still couldn't find an apartment or a house I was looking for, so I, I quite enjoyed being in the hotel. And um, so after a couple of weeks, he says, then I got a call and said, it's the gaffer is on the phone. I says, uh, gaffer, why are you calling me then anyway? Because it's unusual for the gaffer to call you. And he says, listen, you've been here two weeks. I heard you've been out in Manchester. <laughs> I'm going to take you out of that hotel. <laughs> and he put me in the smallest hotel in Alderley Edge. <laughs> the Alderley Edge Hotel, a hotel that he goes every, every, on every Sunday for his Sunday lunch. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so, he can have, so he can look at what I'm doing. And he, has, he has all the reception and the manager in the hotel looking at who has been in and who has been out of the hotel. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we could write a book tonight, couldn't we? Hey, we've got a book here. Listen, we could talk all night, guys. I just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm sure the uh, the gold and the silver ticket holders tonight have really enjoyed the experience. What a wonderful Q&A, ladies and gentlemen. Gary Paul's the Alex Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Yeah, none of them stories on Twitter or Facebook tonight, please, about air rifles and all that business. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Now, ladies and gentlemen, going to give you a couple of minutes because Rick is ready 
we have the quiz coming up, so please get yourselves ready. We're going to start the quiz in the next two minutes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so thank you. Quick, 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 quick. Yeah, quick, 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 quick. Yeah, sorry, Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Go quick. Go quick. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> He's away. Come on, Luke! Come on, Luke! Absolutely brilliant. Come up into a nicer fellow. Tom, I'm so glad you're with the Pally V4 roughly all you want. Well done, Luke. Well done, well mate. Cheers, pal. Tom, I was chatting with him before. Do you know someone? Was it by a Leverkusen? Did anyone go on the Leverkusen trip? Yeah. The plane was delayed, it was his fault. <laughs> All right. We had a bit of a chat later, it's a great story. It's brilliant, but well done, Luke. Couldn't happen to an ISO lad. Follows the reds all over. Okay, Tom Manny's. Well done, Luke. We've got a signed shirt. Shirt was it? It's gone for the shirt. What a look at Yeah. Guy. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Until, 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 until he's signed by Nally. 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 <laughs> yeah, cheers, fella. Nutty, can I have the ball, please? <laughs> like I say, massive United fan travels all over. Unbelievable, this lad. Cheers, Luke. Just, just that. Uh, when the draw's done on Monday, let us know what flight you're going on with you. Make sure. Yeah, anyway, I'm we'll rush through, he said. Thanks a lot, Luke. Top fella. It's a white ticket. White ticket. 226 to 230. 226 <laughs> to 230. <laughs> Who is it then? 226 to 230. Is it open it? Ticket. Hi, is it Nanny though? Who is it? You have to check it. You must Corey, check. what is it? Please, you have to Come check on. it now. Let's check it and who let's is it? Let's see who it is. The suspense is killing me, Luke. Please. I know. Please be Nanny. Please don't. Hang on, where are we are. Please don't be Nanny. Please be nanny. Please. Please. Well, well, That's just one, I think. It's just one. Yeah. Just one of them. We've got shirts. Oh, it's all of them. It's all of them. Oh, oh fuck. This is good. Well done, Kate. Well done. That's yeah, well, brilliant, well, man. Well done, Kate. Well, nanny is there. <laughs> well done, Luke. Well done. Okay, Kate. <laughs>